As we look at it from this perspective of, of a little child, what does it mean to have Christmas as a little child? And so our guest of honor is Jesus. Okay, question. Did you get everything you wanted for Christmas? Yes, you did. And if you did want something that you didn't get, you recognize that, you know what, there's always next year, there's always your birthday coming up, and if you have one of our girls, we have January birthdays, and they're looking forward to that as well. But you realize that it's not really about that. Did you send out an extra place or a plate? We went through the adornments last night, which is really just kind of in preparation for Christmas. There's little things that represent Jesus, the coming king, and the shepherd. And there's this crown for the king, and there's the shepherd, and talks about the lion of Judah. And all the things that Jesus is, almost kind of just really encapsulates the, the indescribability of Jesus. How vast his, his different roles are, and how he can be a lion and a lamb, and how he can be a shepherd, the lowliest of lowlies, and then he can be the king. And you realize, wow. That's what it's all about. Do we set a place out for him? Do we set a time to think about him? Or is it just about the presence? Is it just about the normal thing? Because it really isn't our birthday. Because if I ask you, did you get everything for Christmas that you wanted? You start thinking what to yourself? It's my birthday, right? It's my birthday. That's, that's what it is. And you realize it's really not. We all know that. But we really need to think about it. It's his birthday. And it's a time for us to remember his Entering into the world as a baby. Now, I saw that little picture and that looks a little bit like Morgan. And Morgan's going to probably get me later for that. But it does. Just a cute little picture of a baby who, and the picture is from God. God sent us a child. And that child was born and would be a blessing to the whole world. And would be something that we would look forward to. Well, this is foretold a long, long time ago. As we look at Luke 2, we look to see as uh, God reveals to the most lowly people that he could reveal it to that there is a special day coming. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. What's interesting is, is who did God send the angel to first? Shepherds. Now, shepherds, what is, what is the, the social strata for a shepherd? High or low? Low, low. Who was the shepherd? I asked the kids this last night, and they had a little trouble kind of figuring out what I was talking about because they were thinking about presents. Who was the shepherd in the Bible? David was. David was. And you recognize, wow, David was the shepherd, but what did that mean? Well, when Samuel said, I have one, Samuel said, do you have any other kids? And Jesse said, I got one more, but he's just a little shepherd in the, in the, in the fields. So Samuel says, bring him. And sure enough, David being the lowly shepherd, as God reaches out to the lowest of lowlies, anoints him and brings him into a place where he is of great, great use and power in the kingdom. He goes on, suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with an angel praising God and saying this, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And his favor has rested on you this morning. If you are here this morning, it's because God's favor has rested on you. Someone told you to come to church, check it out. Or someone told you a long time ago, you know what? This is Jesus. And that them telling you that was of great, great value to you. People who have no understanding of Jesus have a, a poverty that we couldn't even imagine when we sit down and think about it. So when God announced the, announced, announced the, the Lord's birth to the shepherds, what he was doing was communicating something that had never been really been done before. He was reaching out to a very, very uh, low class of society to communicate to them, you know what? The Savior is born, you've been waiting all this time, and even though you are of little value, I go to you to show you that I will reach out to the lowest of the low in the societal realm to communicate my love for, 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 for mankind. So even though they were low, they were not respected, that he said this, today in the town of David, a Savior is born to you. You, a shepherd. You, a house 
uh, someone who takes care of the house, who takes care of how many kids, Misty? Four, not four, four, just four, <laughs> okay? And you realize, you know what? Some days Misty doesn't feel much different than the shepherd, do you? No, no, come on, come on, come on. And you realize, you know what? God communicates to us, he says, you know what? To you, a savior has been born today, to you. Joshua, a savior's been born. Josiah, and you realize, wow, to me, a savior's been born. The least of the least. Anyone that matters to God can, can actually realize that what happened was God communicated to the shepherds, you matter a bunch to me. Ryan, when was your birthday this year? Do you, do you remember this past year? What, when was it? 822 what? 822. August 22nd, Ryan's birthday. Now look at Ryan. How old do you think he looks? He's in the back there. Blue coat. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> he looks pretty young. Yeah, pretty young kid. He looks pretty old, doesn't he? Because when you're when you're five, Ryan is older than just one year old, but his birthday was on August 22nd. Do you know why? Rock, do you know why? You know why. That's when he entered into a relationship with baby Jesus. That was his birthday. That was his spiritual birthday. That's when he said, I do. And it was one of those things where you go, wow, God's significance, the significance of God coming is that he can reach out to a, let's just say a 20 to 30 year old person, and he can reach out to them, and he can bring them in and say, you know what? I have a plan for you. You matter to me. And when Ryan recognized that, all of a sudden, I just sat down with him, shared some things. He considered those things, prayed about those things, and then he just told me, I did it. I did it. He entered into a relationship with, with Jesus that day. And the significant thing is that Jesus communi or God communicates to us by sending his son is that we matter to him. We're not just like the... I'm not saying that God doesn't care about cows, but guess what? As far as I know, he has not sent his son to the, his, to the cows. He sent him to us people. He sent him to you and to me because we matter to him. And that is the, the key thing from Christmas is that Christ's birth shows us God loves us. 1 Corinthians 1.26, Paul says this, Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. We're like shepherds. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble worth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. What basically he's saying is, you know what? I can take anything and I care about you as a person. I don't care what your status is. I don't care where you are in the societal thing. I care about you and your life is a spiritually eternal life no matter how you slice it. Slice it. So if we have significance to God, God announces to the shepherds, these lowly people, he obviously cares about you and me. And that's the message we need to understand, that Christ's love is a gift from God that communicates, I love you. Now then, here's, here's the true thing. We are always influencing someone even though we may not feel that way. We are always influencing someone even though we may not feel that way. And if I was going to pick on Ryan again, which I'm not, he would probably come up with a list of people who kind of influenced him to maybe come to church. Who invited you to church, Ryan? Sister. His sister invited him to church. Did she have influence? If you asked his sister today, just if you, if you said to her, do you think you're an influential person? She'd say, you know, probably not. Not really that influential. But he would say differently. You all have influence. You parents, you have an, an, a God-given influence that no one can match. No one has anywhere close to the influence that you have on your kids. God made it that way. It's just the way you are tuned. They're tuned. They want to, they unfortunately, uh, the understanding would be that they want to listen to you until they're teenagers. Right, teenagers? Except your parents will be a lot wiser in about four years than you ever dreamed. I'm just telling you that ahead of time so you know when it happens. You go, wow, it's true. So keep listening to them. They've seen a lot of things. Our lives are important to God. Our lives are important to God. God cares about us, but he also has a huge, huge impact that he wants to have us fulfill within our Oyakas, the people who we know. 
number two, I think it is. Truth number two, God can use you. Surprising, isn't it? God can use you. God can use you. How can God use you? Let me ask Josiah. How has God used you this weekend, or this last week? I should have Josiah said it yesterday. Josiah has an amazing ability in, in, as a musician. So does this brother. So does Phil. And you know what? Actually, you just see, wow, God can use that for good purposes. Last night, um, Jackie said that many people said, wow, that was a great service, great service, great service. All of the parts of the service of Christmas, as we sing, as we use our, as we use our gifts to, to uh, play instruments or to speak or to encourage and, and just to admonish people or to encourage them as they come and as they leave, plays into what Ryan experienced on August 22nd. No one comes to Christ just out of the blue. It's usually just this process of getting to know someone, coming to a church service, the music is uplifting, and people are encouraging, it, and the message is there, and they, all of a sudden they go, wow, after about six or seven times of having that, they go, you know what, I get it. I understand it. God can use us. And it used it, we think, what can I do? Well, what can a little shepherd do? Well, he can become the king of Israel, the most, the most blessed nation ever. God uses Joseph, God uses a little boy with some fish and some bread. God uses a little peasant girl named Mary who had no standing whatsoever to be the, the person who would birth Jesus the baby. And you realize, you know what? We are weak. God is strong. That's when he is strongest is when we allow ourselves to be used by him. 1 Corinthians 1.25, Paul says this again. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. And 120 is the same thing. You realize that, wow, the weak are made strong and, you, and, and useful and influential by God's hand. And that is how God uses us to do the things in the kingdom. And here lastly, truth number three, we all have to know this. And at Christmas time, it's tough. There are a lot of stresses and things that come in and all of a sudden we start kind of do the stinking think and start sort of thing when we start thinking that you know what I don't have any value families away or we, we have lots of troubles we have a lot of scheduling things and the, the pressures get to us and we lose sight of what's really important we all need to know that God loves us do you know how you know that someone loves you well there are the languages of love you guys have heard of the love languages start naming a couple love languages Physical touch. <laughs> Physical touch, yes. Quality time. Quality time. Acts of service. Words of encouragement. Yes. And you realize all of those things are ways that we communicate our love to us. How does God communicate his love to you? If God, from the universe, who created the whole thing, and was looking down at this little speck and, and wanted to say, I love you, what would he do? Yeah. yeah. He would send a message, first a messenger, and then he would send a message. And at some point in time, not only would he give acts of words of encouragement and all that, but the acts of service that occurs on Jesus' birthday by God sending his own son, sending him to, to pay for our sins, is the act of service that covers all things. God loves you because Jesus came. That's how I know. God loves me. Jesus came for you and me. And so for the single mom or for the person who's lonely, a person who's in, in, a, in a place that's just not so good, stuck in addiction, or they've lost their spouse or their child or their finances went down the toilet, and life looks hopeless, God shows his love for us. Because Jesus was the gift. They said, you know what? This cost me this much. This cost me everything. And I still, I still would do it again. God loves you. God loves me. August is the time that we collect all of our grain. Basically, our grain was our cash crop and our cattle kind of filled in when the grain wasn't good. And for my dad to sit beside sit beside the common that should be running in well that go-kart did what for me? He said, I love you.
God said, I love you because he gave his most valuable thing. My dad's most valuable thing at that point in time was time, and, and the focus on this small thing that really didn't matter, it's probably resting somewhere out on some, some farm. But it, what it was was a message that said, I love you. I came and I sent my son to pay for your sins. And that is the message of Christmas. That Jesus' birthday would be a remembrance of what God did for us. That he loved us so much that he would send his own son. And thinking about your own kids and how hard that would be to do that is an amazing thing. Let's thank him for that. Whenever we get a gift, what do you do? Say, I think, thank you. Thank you. So let's do that. Let's bow our hands right now. God, we thank you for the gift. This ultimate gift, it's an indescribable gift. A gift that cost you so much. There wasn't anything more that you could have given us. You give us the very thing that meant the most to you. We appreciate that so much. We know you love us because of that. God, that you could use the lowly, that you could make us useful in your kingdom, and that you have a plan for us that we would be influential. But most of all, God, that you just love us, that you care about us, and that for eternity we will sit and worship you as you communicate to us, communicate your love for us, and in a really in a way that is so clear for us to see. We look forward to that. In the meantime, we want to say thank you, Lord, and thank you for your thank you for your son. Thank you for the blessing that he is. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Hey, how about real quick we sing happy birthday to Jesus before we go? All right, here we go. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. All right, may you be blessed today, Jesus. All right. Thank you guys for coming. God bless you. We'll see you downstairs if you got a minute or next week if you want.